animal testing. It's a hot and a cold topic. Uh, let's talk about the regulation first, and then a little bit about the science uh, behind or how science view animal testing. You all know that the EU regulation um, in two different aspects has banned animal testing. The Seventh Amendment of the uh, uh, directive published in 2004 has banned all animal testing on finished products. But then the cosmetic regulation published in 2009 banned all animal testing on ingredients as well in, you, as well as the finished product, which are using cosmetics. The, the ban relate to performance of animal tests to assess human health in the EU or for the EU cosmetic purpose is not allowed after 11 March 2009. But the ingredient tested outside the EU, the deadline was the 11th March 2013. So there was um, there were different deadlines for the ban on animal testing, whether the tests were done in the EU or outside the EU on the ingredients. So, are all uh, animal tests banned? Well, the regulation says that, or the interpretation of the regulation by the EU Commission, says that tests performed outside the EU not to meet the requirement of the EU regulation are not banned. What does that mean in practice? It means that if the tests are done to meet other regulations, if you want to register an ingredient as quasi-drug ingredient in Japan, you have to submit a lot of uh, technical data. There is no other way because they specify the method and many of the methods are animal tests, but that's not, that's acceptable. When the test is performed by the authorities, that's the case in China today, when you register your product, you have to submit samples. These samples are going into the lab, they do a number of tests, like pH and viscosity, etc. but they also do animal tests and test done on ingredient used in drugs. If your ingredient is going both in cosmetics and in drug, you must do the animal test for the drug registration. But you cannot do the, the uh, test for the uh, cosmetic. So does that mean that, well, if I have an ingredient I don't know, I can do the test and register it as a quasi-drug or, for example, and then I have the data that I can use. The answer is no, because there is a caveat. None of the, re you cannot use the result for the safety of the ingredient or the finished product in EU. So while you have done the test for other purposes and it's in line with the guideline, uh, the EU guideline, the data cannot be used. It cannot be used for the safety assessment in the EU. So it's a tricky situation in EU, and not very clear. That's why the Commission had to issue uh, explanations and guidelines. What is happening in other countries? Now, a lot of countries have followed and are banning animal tests on cosmetic finished products and cosmetic ingredients. That's the case of Norway. As you know, Norway is not part of the European Union, but they are attached to it and uh, whatever the, the regulation in Norway is identical to the one in the EU, so they just followed and banned the, at the same time animal tests in the same way. India, India as of June 20, 2013, has banned all animal tests on finished products and ingredients, local, locally made as well as imported products. Israel, as of January 1st, 2013, so the same, they followed exactly the same um, uh, requirement. Uh, Brazil is quite interesting because only the state of Sao Paulo 
which is the biggest one, the most populated and the most industrialized one, but is the only one that, as of March 2014, has banned animal tests. I'll explain a little bit uh, what's happening in Brazil in uh, the next slides. New Zealand has banned as of March 2015. They were not doing it, so it wasn't a very difficult uh, decision to make, but it had to go through Parliament, and uh, the ban has been effective. And Turkey has joined the group on, in July 2015. So it's not only the EU that is banning animal testing, as you can see. Other countries, including Asia, in Asia, are banning animal tests. Korea has banned animal testing on finished product as of March of this year. But the Korean regulation only ban animal testing where Korean accepted non-animal alternatives are available. And it only applies to finished product, not to ingredients yet. So if an alternative method is not available, then the animal test will be allowed. Uh, obviously, on finished product, we don't do a lot of animal tests uh, or a lot of endpoint animal tests. Um, and um, uh, there are Korean accepted methods for eye irritation and skin irritation. So what's next? What's, the, uh, what's coming up in the future? Uh, there are bills to ban animal testing that have been introduced in Parliament in Australia, in Brazil, in Russia, in Taiwan, and the U.S. Um, the expectation, because of the process, parliamentary process, the expectation is that um, most of these will be uh, passed, voted in 2016. So probably at the end of next year, if I come back here and give you another talk of the update on animal testing, I'll tell you that it's now banned in Australia, Brazil, Russia, Taiwan, and the US. It's in good progress in the parliament. It has gathered momentum. There's a big support from the local population, but it has to go through the political process. It's a little bit less uh, developed or advanced in other countries like Argentina, Can Canada, Colombia, and Peru. There are discussions in place and some of the parliamentary, parliamentary uh, uh, elected parliamentary people are uh, writing the draft of the bills. So uh, most probably in 2016, uh, there will be bills uh, introduced in parliament in these four countries, okay, mainly Latin America, but Canada as well. And uh, one could expect that in 2017, these countries will ban animal testing. So uh, alternative method, we, we talk about um, alternative method and their uh, development. That's not new. You know, the, the first um, funding for the development of alternative method was back in the early 80s. Uh, I started my career in cosmetics in 1980, so I do remember in, 90, in 81 and 82, billions of dollars were started to be uh, poured into research for alternative to animal testing. And since then, a number of methods have been validated. So the excuse that there's no validated method is not good. And alternative methods are now accepted actually by China regulators since July 2013. They, they, if you submit the data on, with alternative method for those products that don't need to go through the testing automatically, they'll accept the result. If you don't have tests, they'll do them. But you pay, okay? They do the test, but you have to pay for them. Um, there are centers for validation to, of alternative method, which are called QVAM, 
uh, that have been established. Uh, in Europe, it's the ECVAM, European Center for Validation of Alternative Method. But now we have a JKVAM for Japan and KVAM for Korea. And uh, other center for validation will uh, be established in some countries. But many countries are just following the OECD um, approval of the validation. So many alternative methods can be used to replace uh, animal testing. Uh, in preparing for this, I, I, I have a list of the method and the, the end point. And I was quite surprised because I didn't follow the development uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, but they are method in areas where um, which I discovered. Now, under ethical review, one can use human testing for finished product. There, what I mean by ethical review is, first thing, you have to do a safety assessment of the formula you're going to test. If your safety assessors say it's approved for testing, then you can do the test. The difference is between approved for testing and approved for commercialization is that testing is done under controlled conditions. The number of people is limited, there's a dermatologist to follow, and there's a very controlled condition. When you sell your product, you don't know who is using it and how it is used. <clears throat> then the uh, panelists, the volunteers, have to be volunteers. Namely, you're not allowed to use employee of your company. That's not allowed. You have to have a, con a, a written uh, consent. So people have to be informed that they are doing a test, that they can withdraw, that if they have a reaction, they have the right to stop, etc. So there are a lot of uh, uh, con uh, considerations to be taken before you do a human test. But it's easy to do, and there are laboratories that are specialized in that. Some of the facts. Um, alternative methods are actually more accurate than animal tests, and there is a far better correlation to human. Um, they are, in general, cheaper to perform than animal tests. They are producible. You can do the same method again and again on the same ingredient or the same product, and you will get the same result. And they are easy to be repeated, because when you do when you do the test in vitro, you do three times at the same time, um, and it's easier. For most of the method, there is no heavy investment, neither in training nor in equipment required. It's relatively uh, light in terms of investment. Human test, so no human test should be conducted unless you have a safety assessment is done prior to uh, the test, and it shows that the risk taken by the volunteer is minimal. Now, what are the human tests that can be done? Usually a single patch. You can do primary irritation or photo irritation if you have uh, UVA <coughs> uh, irradiation of the site uh, after application. Repeated patch, so it can be, it's a cumulative irritation. Human repeated insult patch test, HRIPT, that give you the allergy potential. And if you do a uh, photo irradiation, you have photo allergy testing. You can have a human use test. You give your product to different volunteers and they try the product. And then you gather the information. You ask them to fill in a questionnaire. <coughs> you have the information back, including how they perceive your product, but also if they had any reaction. And actually, if you want to, to, do, your, to do the claim that your product is for sensitive skin, that's one of the best tests to do. You give your product to test to people that claim they have sensitive skin. And then comedogenicity test. There's no other way today it used to be done on the ear of a rabbit, but today uh, we do it on the uh, forehead uh, of human or on the upper back of uh, human, 
where the product is applied and the dermatologist will count the blackhead, the comedon, before and after, and make sure that there is no increase in comedon. That's non-comedogenic type of test. For the finished product, there are alternative methods for eye and skin irritation and allergy. And these tests give a much higher correlation to human data than animal method. That's why uh, most of the finished product companies have replaced animal testing for uh, most of the products they sell uh, for, for a few large number of years, more than 20 years now. So the alternative method, these are some of the test method. Uh, eye irritation, uh, skin irritation, you have human skin models that are used. For eye irritation, there are several methods. Uh, ex vivo on a bovine uh, eye taken from the slaughterhouse. So it's an animal eye, but you don't, the, the animal is dead. And you don't, you, you don't kill the animal, it's killed for other purposes. So that's called ex vivo. Head cam, which is a chorioantoinic membrane of the egg. Uh, there are cell culture, there are quite a number of eye irritation validated test methods. For eye color corrosion, there are ex vivo on the eye or a test called Corositex that is in, vit in vitro and is used for corrosion. Uh, skin corrosion, human skin model, that's more for chemicals, obviously, than for finished product. Obviously, we don't want finished product to be corrosive. Okay. Skin absorption, front cells, uh, human skin models, they are a number of uh, techniques where you apply the product and then you do stripping of the model and you measure uh, where the product is or you have a, a, a marker like a blue dye attached to your substance, and you can see where it penetrates. Phototoxicity, they are cell-based model. Photoirritation, photoallergy, as I said, you can do that on human. Mutagenicity, um, a test on bacteria is the most common one. It's called the Ames test. Uh, it's very commonly used on uh, ingredients. I do recommend it on uh, plant extracts to make sure that your plant extract is not mutagenic. Allergy, the best is uh, human test on HRIPT, but they are now coming up in vitro method that can be used and are cheaper than uh, HRIPT. Skin sensitization, uh, these are the tests, direct peptide reactivities, assay, keratinosense, THP1 human cell line activation, or HCLAT, Etc. So these are tests that <clears throat> allow you to determine skin sensitization, which is, are, is my product going to create allergy? Okay, what about ASEAN? We're in ASEAN. And, um, well, testing of finished product is left to the consideration of the company placing the product in the market. When you place your product in the market, you must have a safety assessment of the product. How you do it, it's left to you. There is a guideline you can follow. It's left to you. We have a, a guideline for the safety assessment of botanical extract. It's free of charge. So you go to the website and download it if you want to do safety assessment of botanical extract. Uh, you're welcome to follow the guideline that has been put together by the ASEAN Cosmetic Association and has been approved and discussed by the regulators. Company that do test their finished product can move away from animal testing. There is no, it's not mandatory to do animal testing. It's not mandatory not to do. It's up to you. And if you don't have in-house method, many companies don't, there are laboratories around the world that will take your product and do the test for you and give you the results back. So all this is feasible, it's available. Now, in order to evaluate the safety of the finished product, the Article 8.1, 
of the uh, ASEAN Cosmetic Directive says that you have to assess the safety for human health of the finished product based on its ingredient, their chemical structure, and the level of exposure. So understanding and having the data on ingredient is very important to determine the safety of the finished product. With the ban on animal testing on ingredients, especially in Europe, it's difficult to get information on some of the endpoints. Today, there is no alternative method to systemic toxicity. So having the no observable adverse effect level, no L, um, is in vitro is not yet possible. Reproductive toxicity is the ingredient going to create problems in the next generation and the, th the following generation. We don't know how to do it in vitro yet. But uh, the new method are trying to use multiple endpoints. It won't be one single method. It will be a combination of different methods to evaluate uh, this end result. And the first um, trials, the on ongoing trials, are showing uh, quite promising results. So I'm expecting that within five years, we will have alternative method in these areas as well. So now the burden is with the raw material suppliers. And um, you have to provide the safety on the ingredients that you sell. And the finished product company has to use this data to evaluate the safety of their combination of these ingredients. So for a cosmetic company, they have to be aware of the difficulties that the suppliers are facing, and, um, but they have also to make sure that the ingredients are safe. So there are various ways of doing that using a research engine, but don't use Google, please. Uh, you get garbage out. Uh, there is a, uh, Google has a, a site, a search engine called scholar.google that only search the scientific papers okay, and the patents. So it's also good to know if somebody has patented uh, what you want to, to do. But it, it essentially look at only the scientific papers. But it tells you if there is data published, if there is analysis published, and then you can trace to the ingredient. Not easy, but it's possible. So what is the significance of the EU regulation? Uh, all products manufacturing, cosmetic finished product, manufactured or imported in the EU, must not have been tested on animals after 2004. It's not because you did the test in 2006, but you didn't sell before 2015 that you can sell. If your test is be after, before, uh, sorry, after 2004, you're not allowed to sell the product. All cosmetic products manufactured or imported in the EU must not contain ingredients that have been tested on animals in after uh, March 2013 or 2009 if the test was done in the EU. So if you are a cosmetic manufacturer in Asia and you want to export your product in the EU, be careful about has your product been tested on an animal, have the ingredient been tested on an animal, and do they meet the requirement or not. So you have to ensure the safety and manufacturing, green manufacturers are turning more and more to alternative method because there's no choice. The impact is that um, uh, if you export finished product or ingredient to the EU, you have to abide by the EU regulation about this animal test. And same applies to companies exporting to India or now to finished product exporting, exported to Korea. So there are a number of countries, growing number of countries I mentioned, that are banning animal tests. And next year, uh, if everything goes uh, based on my prediction, uh, it will be the same in Taiwan, in Australia as well. So my view to the future, first, a, a look at the past. I did some correlation between animal tests and human test on irritation and allergy. And I found out 
back in 1991 that the correlation between the rabbit and the human is about 50 to 60 percent, which means that you toss a coin and it's much cheaper than using rabbits. You toss a coin and you say, oh, face, product is not irritant, as good as the rabbit. But alternative to animals are the future because it's a better science, because it's easier to do, easier to reproduce, either easier to interpret. And it has a much better correlation to human. Back in the 90s when I did this study, uh, my correlation between in vitro testing and human was about 85%. And today with the improvement in the method, you probably get above 95% correlation. So really animal tests uh, are, are useless. They don't tell you what the product will do in the market. And it can tell you that the product is irritant when it's not. So uh, if, it's, if it tells you the product is irritant and you don't launch your product, you, you do that based on a data that is wrong. Um, so alternative methods do not exist yet for some of the endpoints, but active research is going on. I, uh, I lost track of all these uh, research projects and programs, but uh, once a year when I go to the conference in Europe, uh, somebody is presenting on the new method and it's amazing. They are structure activity relationship. They are a computer program that tells you that based on the structure of the molecule for an ingredient, the chance of it being a toxic is very low or very high. The chance of it being uh, sensitizing is very low or very high. And then it guides you in what to do and what to do, not to do. I mentioned that ASEAN has published a guideline for a safety assessment of botanical ingredients. It's available on the ASEAN Secretariat website, as well as ACA, the ASEAN Cosmetic Association website. So go there, download it, use it, it's free of charge. There are centers of validation of the method that have been set up in the EU back in the 90s, ECVAM. In the US, it's the CAT, Center for Alternative to Animal Testing. It's part of Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, and it was established uh, also uh, around the 1990. And now there is one new one in Japan and a new one in Korea that have been established during the last couple of years. <clears throat> All multinationals have eliminated animal testing. That's, uh, I can almost guarantee it while I don't work for them. But um, uh, there's no company in uh, multinational that does animal testing uh, for the various reasons that I explained before. <clears throat> Within the next five years, the number of countries banning animal testing will increase and will cover the majority of the markets around the world. Within five years, uh, most, if not all, the countries will accept that data based on alternative method. Already, it's a, a big win, and China is accepting data on animal, with alternative method. They also are starting to use uh, alternative method in their uh, centers, uh, but it will come. Uh, within 10 years, it will be impossible to run an international cosmetic business I'm talking business, not company, because it's raw material supplier as well as finished product, if you have done animal tests. That, thank you for your attention.